welcome you again to the Papyrus TV African News Highlights for the week. I am Vivian Alubeze and today is 23rd of June 2023. The Middle Belt Forum MBF has called on the Department of the State Service, DSS, to arrest the former governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasir El Rafai over his recent Islamization comments, which they describe as dangerous for Kaduna in particular and Nigeria as a whole. The North Central Regional Body, in a statement, said Erofai was a bad politician who continued to play dirty politics with religion, forgetting that Nigeria is a multi-religious country. The forum has called on DSS and other Nigerian security agencies to call the former governor for questioning. In another development, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASO, has warned that the student loan mandate is not sustainable for the students, considering the poverty levels in the country. It can be recalled that President Bola Tinibu had signed into law the student loan bill in fulfillment of a promise he made during his campaign. The bill was sponsored by the Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, who is now the President Chief of Staff. However, the ASU President explained that the conditions for the loan are not practicable. In a statement, he said more than 90% of students won't be able to repay the loan. In Kaduna State, His Excellency, the Governor of Kaduna State, Senator Uba Sani, has applauded President Bola Tinibu on the appointment of Major General Christopher Musa as the new Chief of Defense Staff. President Tinibu had on Monday appointed the new service chiefs to replace the old ones and elevated Malam Noho Ribadu, who was earlier appointed security advisor to the position of the National Security Advisor. Similarly, a former theater commander, Operation Hadin Kai, Major General Christopher Musa, has replaced General Loki Irabo as the Chief of Defense Staff. Meanwhile, Major General Tahorid Labaja is now the Chief of Army Staff. He replaced Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya. Air Vice Marshal H.B. Abubakar was appointed the Chief of Air Staff in place of Air Marshal Oludayo Amao and Rear Admiral E.A. Ogala will take over from Vice Admiral Awal Gambo as the Chief of Naval Staff respectively. The Governor said it was a well-deserved appointment and he sends his congratulatory message and goodwill to the Chief of Defense. It was reported that gunmen attacked the convoy of the former governor of Imo State and senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Rochas Okorocha, where a police officer was killed. Senator Rochas Okorocha, who made the claim during the birthday celebration of the People's Democratic Party (PDP) governorship candidate in Imo State, Samway Anyao, in Amaimo. Ikeduru local government area of the state says two other security agents were kidnapped by the attackers. The ex governor explained that he was returning from Enugu after attending the funeral ceremony of the wife of the former Senate president, Senator Ken Namani, when his convoy was attacked at Ihobe community along the Okigwe Enugu Expressway, leaving the cars riddled with bullets. His words, it's quite unfortunate that the police officer lost his life. May his soul rest in peace. Okorocha also said it was unfortunate that he was safe in Enugu, which isn't his state, until when he got into his own state, the state he presided over as governor for eight years. Thankfully, the senator was not on the convoy when the attack happens. Okorocha and the Imo state governor, 
Hope Uzodima had not been in good terms for three years, with both men apportioning blames on the security problems in the state to each other. Going to Cross River, the state government of Cross Rivers has banned the usage of commercial motorcycles in the state in the city of Calabar. The governor of the state, Prince Basi Oti, says the decision was taken after due consultation with key security chiefs in the state and the action is towards the safety and security of the people. The statement has directed the following. A total ban on the activities of all commercial motorcyclists within the city of Calabar. Those willing to use their motorcycles to earn a decent living are restricted only to remote areas away from the city center. Anyone caught going against the law will have his motorcycle impounded and the offender prosecuted. Also, those involved in criminal acts by stealing public amenities like street lights, lampposts, traffic lights, etc., are advised to desist from it. Whoever that is caught will be made to face the full wrath of the law, he stated. In a recent development, President Bola Tinibu appointed Deputy Inspector General of Police, DIG, Kayode Egbetokun, to replace the former IG of Police, Mr. Usman Baba, who the former President Muhammad Buhari appointed in April 2021. The President directed Mr. Egbetokun to serve in an acting capacity pending his confirmation in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President, in his inaugural speech, says, Security shall be the top priority of our administration because neither prosperity nor justice can prevail amidst insecurity and violence. Security shall be the top priority of our administration because neither prosperity nor justice can prevail amidst insecurity and violence. Connecting from his speech, one can say this move is widely anticipated and he may want the people he trusts, their ability in place to help achieve the mandate. He also relieved the service chiefs, including the heads of the army, air force and navy of their duties. On the international scene, the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Montgomery, at the presidential villa, in a meeting with the Vice President, Senator Kashim Shetima, gave positive remarks about the policies introduced by President Bola Ahmed Tinebo's government a few weeks after its inauguration. Montgomery said some big and important economic decisions taken by the incumbent leader are already being noticed worldwide. Montgomery said, we discussed a long-standing partnership between the UK and Nigeria. We have many areas of shared interest, including a good history of development cooperation. He also said that there is a great potential to do more as the removal of subsidy and the exchange rate reform creates a much better investment environment. Unanimously, the World Court of Human Rights has established that there is no right to same-sex marriage. In fact, all 47 justices endorsed the ruling that there is no right to the same-sex marriage. The sentence was based on a myriad of philosophical and anthropological considerations based on the natural order, common sense, scientific reports, and of course, positive law in the later case. In particular, the judgment was based on Article 12 of the European Convention on Human Rights. In these historic resolutions, the court decided that the notion of family contemplates not only the traditional concept of marriage, that is the union of a man and a woman, but also that they should not be imposed 
on governments and obligations to open marriage to persons of the same sex. With regard to the principle of non-discrimination, the court also added that there is no discrimination since states are free to resolve marriage only to heterosexual couples. Keep watching the Papros TV Africa. See you again next week. I am Vivian Alubezi.